Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Asti Varma and I'm a grand third year MBA student at Patan Academy of Health Science, Nepal. I hope all of you are doing well. So in today's video, we are just going to go through some of the health advices given by influencers of Nepal and see how accurate they are. And at the end, we are going to go through uh, some facts about research that every person should know in order to be prevented uh, from being fooled by the word research. So the first point is uh, benefits of intermittent fasting, ketosis, and ketosis helps with neuron regeneration, fat loss, and gives you energy. So intermittent fasting is basically where you fast for a given period of time and then you eat it another time, okay? For an example, some people fast for 16 hours and then they will eat in the remaining 8 hours. Now, uh, what is ketosis? So I'll explain this with an example. So suppose you had your meal and now you decided to fast. Hmm. So where do you get your energies from? So at first, glucose is your source of energy. Uh, the body will break down carbohydrates, glycogen. But when you fast for a longer period of time, the glucose in your body is depleted. So now you need a different source of energy because the primary source, that is the glucose, is finished. So now what will happen is that the fat in your bodies will break down and they will form ketones and that ketone is a source of energy okay so that ketone will now give you energy hmm. so ketogenesis which is basically the production of ketones starts after 8 to 12 hours of fasting and the level remains very insignificant till 24 hours and so ketosis which basically means a lot of ketones in your bodies is achieved after three days to three weeks of fasting so when they say like I get I get ketosis after fasting for 16 hours or 20 hours or drinking bulletproof coffee that's not possible right you need you need to fast for a longer time to achieve ketosis so now you guys know it's not ketosis that causes fat loss it is fat loss or lipolysis that causes ketosis and uh, saying that the benefit of ketosis is it gives you energy is like saying that the benefit of being a teacher is you can teach the job of ketosis is to give you energy i have the biggest problem with this line neuron regeneration so neurons uh, or the cells in your brain do not divide you can do anything you want but the cells in your brain will not divide okay you can fast for 16 hours 12 hours 24 hours or whatever period of time the cells in your brain will not divide that's not its physiology so this statement is completely wrong okay so now the second point uh, benefits of intermittent fasting insulin sensitivity so this is a very controversial statement i believe because some studies have shown that uh, intermittent fasting does help with insulin sensitivity and but again we have another set of studies that say insulin sensitivity is not improved by intermittent fasting and what we know about this insulin sensitivity is that calorie restriction and thus decreasing high glycemic index carbohydrates will improve your insulin sensitivity so this is why we do not directly prescribe medicines to a pre-diabetic patient we first counsel them regarding their diet and lifestyle benefits of intermittent fasting fat loss fat burning well this is true if you restrict your calories so we believe that when you do intermittent fasting you'll have fewer calories or fewer food than you did initially calorie restriction will cause weight loss it's not that you can eat how much you want during intermittent fasting eating window and you will not gain weight that's not true and just because you're in intermittent fasting you will not lose some extra calories and intermittent fasting also doesn't mean that you can eat unhealthy food during those uh, eating windows and you will still not be unhealthy again why this statement can be misleading is that most of the studies of intermittent fasting has been done in obese patients so we do not know the safety profile in lean people so for an example an experiment was conducted in lean people a group of people were fed every alternate day so they were given 150 percent uh, of their calories every alternate day and uh, the second group uh, were given 75 percent calories every day and the third group had no calorie restriction but they were, were on intermittent fasting so now what happened so the third group they did not lose any weight the second group lost weight and they lost body fat but the first group who were on calorie restriction and intermittent fasting they did lose weight but they also lost fat and muscle mass so this statement that intermittent fasting is going to cause fat loss and fat burning is true if you are in calorie deficit else it's not it's not calories it's hormones that make you fat if you think that hormones are the major reason you are getting fat or losing weight then you probably have have a medical condition and that needs to be treated by a doctor okay 
So else in a normal healthy body, your hormones are totally fine. Your body is very capable of maintaining homeostasis and fixing those little imbalances that happens here and there. So you do not need to do anything to reset your body. Okay, your body is very fine, very amazing in fixing those small imbalances. And if you still think your hormones are making fat, go visit a doctor. So these days I see a lot of different influencers eating on insulin, saying that insulin makes you fat. Does it? We are going to find out. So now the final one. In order to lose weight, you need to burn more calories by working out than you eat. I mean, the uh, moment I saw this um, statement, I was like, please, please. If you do not understand nutrition, if you do not understand human body, please do not talk about it. Please, this is so misleading. So in order for you to lose weight, you need to spend more energy than you consume. So how do you spend energy? First point, you uh, spend energy by being alive. That means you need to keep your heart pumping, you need to keep your brain working, you need to maintain your posture, you need to metabolize your food. And the second way you uh, spend energy is by working out. But you only spend 0 to 30% of your uh, body's energy by working out. And the way you uh, consume energy is by eating food. So just being in a slight deficit <laughs> will cause weight loss. You do not need to work out like crazy or you do not need to starve yourself. Just eating a 500 uh, calorie deficit will decrease your weight by one pound in a week. Moreover, Mayo Clinic recommends not losing more than one to two pounds per week because the faster you um, decrease your weight by all these extreme diets, crash diet, the faster you are uh, to regain it. So it's not going to be sustainable. So a sustainable weight loss uh, means you need good nutrition, you need good exercise, you need good sleep. So now the final point, why you shouldn't believe on influencers just like that. Uh, so for an example, if I say you, I used to look like this few, uh, few years back and then I become like this. And I did this by stop wearing my sunglasses, but I decreased my weight. So will you believe me? I mean, that's plain dumb. <laughs> so, okay, so how this research works is that we have a list of research. Some researchers are more biased than the other. So when uh, someone says, I like this research, this paper should, this is good, that is good. I mean, you do not know what kind of research uh, was it. Was there any conflict of interest or not? How biased was it? What was the studying methodology? They do not know this. The research may be inaccurate or the research may be accurate, but we do not know, you do not know what kind of research was it. So for example, a lot of influencers will show you case reports or case series, okay? So these are the type of research which is the most biased one. So to say something is scientifically proven, it needs to be higher in this list. For example, meta-analysis. So meta-analysis is basically a conclusion of all of these smaller researches. For example, some studies will show insulin sensitivity is achieved by intermittent fasting. Some studies will say uh, insulin sensitivity is not achieved by intermittent fasting. And this meta-analysis will look at all of these uh, researches and then it will make a conclusion and then we say something is scientifically proven. So just a few papers here and there on something will not mean that something is scientifically proven. I saw some influencers of Nepal who were referencing on uh, YouTube, uh, some doctors on YouTube or the personal trainer. So again, yo, we have some problem. YouTube is not an authentic source, okay? So you do not know what is the background of the people who are giving a talk on YouTube. For example, an influencer of Nepal references Dr. Jason for her points, for her facts. But she probably doesn't have a background understanding on Dr. Jason. I'm not here to say if Dr. Jason is right or wrong. I'm here to say Dr. Jason is controversial. Why do I say that? Because a lot of different nutritionists, dietitians who are experts in their field, a lot of different doctors, a lot of obesity experts, they are completely disagreeing with him. They're calling him out. They're saying he is in a, he's not giving the correct information to the public. So when your influencers pick up things from someone who is controversial, they are very likely to give wrong information to you. So you shouldn't believe them. Just because someone is pretty, has a lot of followers, uses a lot of different terms, doesn't make them right. Hi guys, this is me uh, after the shooting. So um, I just think 
I just think like nutrition is a very simple topic and people are over complicating it and I just want you guys to believe that your body is not screwed up your body is amazing and maintaining itself given that you do not have any medical condition and please do not do any stupid things to reset your body because it doesn't need it your body doesn't need any stupid stuffs your body is amazing and you are great